HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Hey, which glasses look better on me? Oh, what's this? Zenny's 3D virtual try-on. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about the purple cat eyes. I think they're fun. What about these tortoiseshell glasses? Or these rimless sunglasses? Oh, what about these clear frames? Wait, are those prices real? Do they have glasses for men? Yep. They also have affordable blue light glasses. Seriously? At those prices? Get them all. I like where this is going. Zenni.com. Quality prescription glasses starting at six ninety five. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is uh, enjoying inclusion on list of the best podcasts to listen to. And that is because of the guests who join me to have a great conversation where they share their expertise in whatever area of business they know best so that you, the listener, can grab the information that you need and apply it within your own business so that you can be more successful. Today is no different. Today, my guest is Jerry Detweiler. Jerry is a credit expert and the education director at NAV, which provides business owners with tools to build strong business credit and financially healthy companies. She's been interviewed in more than 3,000 news stories, and her articles have been widely widely syndicated. She's the author or co-author of five books, including Finance Your Own Business, Get on the Financing Fast Track. She has hosted her own radio show and testified before Congress on consumer credit legislation. Thanks so much for joining me today, Jerry. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I am thrilled to have you here. I think business credit is one of those things that most people either do not understand or (laughs) do not want to understand, Uh, but (laughs) we're going to have a conversation about it, so hopefully they have a better understanding of it. Um, 
let's start with credit reports and scores because I don't think business owners realize that there are such things as business credit reports and scores. Yeah, so you, right. I mean, can you talk about who creates yes. them, why they matter, all of that? Yes, you're exactly right. So as you mentioned in my bio, I've been involved in credit education for a long, long time. I wrote the first mass market book that talked about FICO scores back in the day. So, you know, back in that time, I would say to consumers in workshops or when I was talking to them, hey, have you ever checked your credit report? And they kind of look at me like, what? I, I, I don't know what a FICO score is. Why would I do that? And then, of course, things changed. and We got access to free annual credit reports on the consumer side and all these consumer protections. But that hasn't happened on the business side. And so we've done a few surveys where we found that about 70 to 75% of small business owners have no clue that their business has a business credit report. And even if they think there's one out there, they have no idea how to check it. But the really interesting thing here is that these business credit reporting agencies have been around for a long time. Dun & Bradstreet is one of the oldest credit bureaus in the U.S. Abraham Lincoln worked for them back in the day. I mean, they've been around for a long time. So it's really interesting that there's not much visibility on the part of the business owners who, where these reports could impact their financing, their business in a variety of ways, and we can certainly talk about those and yet they just completely don't know how it exists or what they should do about it. That is amazing. Why I think it's is fascinating. that? Right? I, I mean, if this, if this is a thing, oh. Yeah, well, well here's my theory. It. So my theory is that, and I don't think this is completely original, but it, traditionally, legislatively, what Congress has said, when it comes to business transactions, they've said, hey, businesses are sophisticated. They can hire advisors. They can hire an attorney to look at something or an accountant or something else. And so a lot of the legislation that we have that protects consumers does not apply to small business. But you and I both know that there are a lot of businesses that are just, you know, one person or maybe one person and a part-time person and they're doing everything and they may or may not have, feel like they have the time or the wherewithal to figure out this whole business credit equation. And so that's part of the reason that NAV exists, part of the reason I'm at NAV because I wrote my book, Finance Your Own Business, and talked about business credit before I joined NAV. I interviewed the CEO in the course of writing the book and I loved what they were doing. So I came on board full time. And, um, you know, I, I just find that uh, I think there's a, this is sort of a tipping point where we're going to start educating more small business owners. They're going to start understanding this. They're going to start saying, Hey, why am I not protected? And how can I protect yourself? And hopefully that will, you know, raise the visibility and also make it a little bit more easy for them to navigate. Yeah, which I think would be great because you're so right. So many of us are one man or woman bands or, or tremendously small. And if we don't even know it exists, then we don't even know we should be paying attention to it. Right, right. And until recently, it's been expensive too. So that's been another factor. You know, you could, you could spend easily 80 to 150 bucks checking one of your commercial credit reports. Now we give everyone a free summary for, for free from Equifax, Experian and, and Dun & Bradstreet. But that's that's pretty new. That's only in the past couple of yeah. years that that's come about. So there's a lot of awareness that still needs to happen on the part, but it's, it's fun for me because I get to get to help. Yeah. Educate. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So where do we get our business credit reports? The same place we get our personal ones? Not exactly. So Experian and Equifax both have commercial divisions. Now, I want to emphasize that those, those databases that have the commercial, the business credit information are completely separate from consumers. So that, that data is never going to be mixed up. There is one FICO score that will take data from both the business owner's personal credit and the business of the business and use both data sets to create a single credit score. That's called the FICO SBSS score but they don't combine the data. So you know, you're in separate credit bureaus. So you have to check them separately. And then, as I mentioned, you have Dun & Bradstreet. So those are the three that I would say are the big three that you want to make sure you're monitoring. DNB, uh, Equifax, and Experian. Although interestingly, in the, uh, in the world of business credit, there can be some very specialized credit bureaus. Um, so for example, a credit bureau that just deals with the food and beverage industry 
or um, one that deal that traditionally was set up to deal with credit experiences in the seafood industry. So there's these other ones that are kind of very specific. I wouldn't worry about those too much unless, you know, it comes up, like maybe you belong to a trade association and they mention it and you say, hey, I'm going to check that out. But if you're checking the big three, then you're, for most people, you'll be covering your bases that way. Okay. And are there differences between what's on the business credit report and what's on the personal? There are differences. Um, it's, it, in fact, it can be um, incredibly frustrating for someone coming to the business credit world where they're expecting the same experience as the consumer world, right? So in the consumer world, everything's pretty standardized. I mean, if you, have, if you get an auto loan or you get a credit card, it's going to report to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, all three personal credit reporting agencies. And the reporting's going to be standardizing, standardized because there's, there's actually a, a format for submitting that data to the credit bureaus that's standardized on the consumer side. Business side, much, much different. So you could have a credit card that shows up on one and not the other. You could have a trade account, a vendor account that you have with maybe one of your suppliers shows up on DMB, doesn't show up on the other. Uh, it, the consistency of data reporting is not there on the business credit side. So it's another reason why you have to cover your bases and check all three because there could be different information. I'll give you a quick example. Right. I was recently looking up a business that I knew had filed for bankruptcy and I looked up their business credit because anyone can check your business credit. There's no, there's no restriction. So I can't check your personal credit, but I can check your business credit. Wow. And so I was just checking theirs to see, you know, see how it's reporting. And I found it on uh, one of the major bureau reports, but not on the other two. So this is a pretty big event. It's a bankruptcy, right? And I'm personal yeah. I'll show up on all three. Didn't on business. So just for the business owner, understand that if you see they're quite different, don't be surprised because that's a common occurrence. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, so... If, if someone's listening and they've never known anything about this, do they, do they already have business credit just by virtue of the fact they're a business owner? Or are there steps that they should go through to start establishing business credit? Oh, that's such a great question. Yes. So you may have a business credit report if you have accounts that are reporting to the commercial credit agencies. So for example, if you have a small business credit card, there's a good chance it reports to at least one of those major bureaus. Uh, you might have a trade account that um, that has been reporting, or you might not. We do have a lot of business owners who come to NAV who have had a business for years, and they pay bills, and they pay on time, and they think my credit's good, and then they find out there's just nothing that's reporting because the companies that they're doing business with are not reporting to the business credit bureaus. So uh, the the most the, the way to create a business credit report or a consumer credit report, the way to get a credit report going is to have an account that shows up on your credit report. So you need something that's going to report. And the way to get a business credit score or to get a consumer credit score is to have accounts that are reporting over time because that's what a credit score is. It it looks at how you've paid bills in the past, the bills that appear on your credit report, and then it uses that to predict what's going to happen in the future, whether that's a delinquency, a bankruptcy, whether you pay late, etc. So it's designed to predict something for a lender. So you do need accounts that report. And I'm going to give a very simple tip for a way, two ways to get started that are very easy for, for most small business owners. One is, as I mentioned, to get a business credit card. So a small business credit card. Now, interestingly, Small business credit cards usually make the decision about whether to give you a card based on your personal credit. So your personal ah. credit score is the deciding factor. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. That's so interesting. Okay. Yes. And, and all of them, I will tell you right up front because I get this question all the time, all of them are going to require a personal guarantee. So if you're looking for a, a business, small business credit card that doesn't require personal guarantee, it's really not until you get to the point where your business is very large, you get a commercial credit card. That's where, you know, you have hundred employees and you have a few million dollars in revenue. That's where you get offered those cards that don't have personal guarantees. But when you're a small business, there will be personal guarantee. However, the reporting, all of them report to at least one 
of the major business credit reporting agencies, and some report to multiple ones, and then some of them don't report to the owner's personal credit unless you default. So if you have a business where, you know, maybe seasonally you have to run up balances to stock your inventory, but then you pay it off after that season ends and you count your sales, or maybe, you know, you, you're going to make a large purchase and you're going to max out a credit card. Well, if that shows up on your personal credit, that could really hurt your personal credit scores to max out a credit card. So you might think about a card, a small business card that doesn't show up on personal credit. So I have created two charts and we can, I can certainly give you these links to Dan for the show notes, but one is nav.com slash report. So just nav, N-A-V dot com slash report. And that article lists all the major small business credit cards and which ones report to personal credit. And then nav dot com slash business dash report. So business dash report. That one shows all the major credit card issuers and whether they report to business credit and who they report to. So just think about this as one element of starting the business credit building process. Does that make sense so far? It really does. Yes. Thank you. So the second thing I'd recommend, and this one is also good for someone who maybe doesn't have a great personal credit score right now, and they're saying, hey, I can't qualify for a small business credit card. That is to get a vendor account. And so what these are, these are companies that supply small businesses and larger businesses too. So uh, I'll give you a few names, Suma Office Supplies, uh, Granger, Quill, Uline. They all have catalogs of things you'd buy for your business anyways, you know, copy paper or shipping supplies or Keurig cups for your office coffee machine or whatever it might be. And you can buy those things and get approved without a personal credit check for what's called net 30 terms. And so net 30 terms means that the bill is due in 30 days. And then you use that, you buy what you need for your business, things you're going to buy anyway, and then you pay it off, you know, in full when the bill comes due and you're building a credit reference that shows up on your business credit reports. And that's a really easy way to get started. And again, I'll emphasize these companies I just recommended, they aren't interested in your personal credit. They're really, um, they might start you off with a low credit limit, but as you prove yourself, you can purchase more and more in your building credit in the meantime. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and so interesting. Do, yeah, that, that sounds like a great step. Yeah. And I do have a checklist, by the way. So if we want to put that in the show notes, I'll be happy to share that too. Okay, Elizabeth. great. So. Awesome. Okay. Terrific. And, and when you, you know, I, I get it that it, it builds credit over time. Is there a certain amount of time that people should expect it's going to take before they're really going to see a score that, um, you know, reflects positively. Let's just say they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I would say think about business credit a little differently than personal credit because in personal credit, it's so score driven. You know, everything, they don't check your credit report except unless for maybe for a mortgage, right? They really are just looking at the score. With business credit, you have some lenders or vendors who are pulling the actual report. They might just be looking for red flags, you know, no collection accounts, no bankruptcy, no tax liens. Um, they might be looking at a score. It depends on the lender, what they're looking for, but it tends to be a little broader and less consistent. So what I would say you want to focus on is trying to get at least three to four accounts that are showing up on your business credit over time. And Interestingly, we've done some of this research at NAV because we have about 400,000 small business owners now who are, who are monitoring their business credit through NAV for free. And we're seeing results pretty quickly. In fact, I think it's quicker than personal credit just because so many business owners aren't doing anything that if you start doing something, you can't, you, you, you're, you're ahead of everybody else. So you can see some pretty good results. I've seen them in as little as six months um, by starting to really get proactive about building credit references. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. So when we talk about credit, the other thought that comes to my mind is debt. So what are ways that business owners can manage their debt more effectively? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I want to back up by by yeah. giving a big warning about business financing. Um, you know, we at NAV, we help business owners find financing. So we're not opposed to using financing as leverage in your business. It can sometimes allow your business to grow in a way that you might not be able to with the cash receipts that you're bringing in. Uh, I'll give you a quick story. I was on a, on a webinar with accountants and I was training them on business credit. And afterwards, a woman reached out to me and she said, well, I have this side business. And she said, I sell um, Pandora jewelry on eBay. And there's a jeweler that in town that's going out of business and liquidating. And I can get all this Pandora jewelry for a you know really low price. And I know I can sell it. She'd been doing this for a while. She said, but I need to get a big amount of credit in order to give him the money to buy this. So, it, and I, if I recall right, it was a it was a good chunk of money, several hundred thousand dollars, but she was confident that with her experience, she would have no problem selling it. So that's an example where you, know, you can leverage someone else's money and turn it into revenue for your business. So it's not always bad to leverage credit, but the challenge with business credit, remember I mentioned that it's not very well regulated. Well, in terms of business financing, there's absolutely no requirement that they tell you an annual percentage rate or APR. That's what we... Yeah, I can't, you keep gasping. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am amazed by this information, obviously. Uh, I'm, glad, okay. glad, I'm glad I'm teaching you something because you know a lot about business, so I'm, I'm glad I get to introduce you to this. So with APRs, that's how, we, that's how we compare our car loans and our mortgages and our credit cards on, all on the consumer side. We always look at the APR, right? We see one that's 12% yeah. or one that's 16%. We can see which one's higher. Well, business credit, they don't have to disclose that. And so they get very creative sometimes about, about how they describe the cost of credit. There was a story in Forbes about a hair salon owner and she was trying to expand and she got an offer for financing and on the term she had said 15%. And so in her head, she's thinking 15% APR. It's not super low, but it's not super high either, right? It's, it's okay for a business yeah. for a business loan. Uh, it was actually, it was, we, it was put into a, a calculator and we have these free calculators on the NAV site. You don't need a NAV account to use them. Put into one of these calculators and the APR, okay, you're going to gasp on this one. The, the APR was over 4,000%. <gasps> how does that happen? What isn't that, what, how is that legal? Uh, that's, you know, we get that question a lot. And like I said, it's just not regulated. So for the business owner, I want you to, first of all, think about, you know, what you're borrowing for, how are you going to turn it into additional revenue? You know, what's going to be the return on investment, but also make sure you understand the cost of what you're getting into, because you don't want to get into uh, financing that's unsustainable and that won't help your business move forward. I mean, you couldn't possibly pay that back. Uh, well, unfortunately, there are there is financing that's very predatory, and they just make as much money as they can, and then the business goes out of business. And there are wow. some out there that's their business model. Their business model is to get as much as they can, and then move on to the next customer. And we hope to help. Uh, we hope to help to put those folks out of business just by, you know, offering clear information yeah. to find better offers. Right. Wow. That this is so uh, enlightening. And and I am what so I've had guests on this podcast before have talked about business credit and how to build it and they've and they've never shared half of the information that you are sharing about this. Well, I'm glad you're this, finding it helpful. I'm oh glad. my gosh. So can I throw one more gas yeah. issue into this? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be sure, All right. So the other issue that I think business owners want to be aware of. So even if you're listening to this, you're saying, hey, I don't need to financing. I'm, I'm a cash only, you know, gal. I've got great revenues. I work from home. I don't, I'm not going to worry about that. I want you to think about um, the fact that business identity theft is also a problem. So I was at a conference uh, this past fall and a woman I know very well, she's a, a successful freelance writer. She said, yeah, she said, my relatives, and I'm not talking like her mother or her sister, it was like her ex-husband's sister or something, was, were getting calls about this credit card that she had supposedly opened and hadn't paid. It was a business credit card. And remember, I said, there's no regulations. So if I default on a personal credit card, debt collectors can't call other people and say, hey, Jerry didn't pay your credit card bill. 
that's that's private information. They're not allowed to do that. But with business credit, there's no regulation. So, so she, all these people were getting calls trying to locate her to get her to pay this business credit card, and she had not opened it. Someone else had opened it in the name of her business. So the other thing I want you to be aware of is the fraud issue. Last year, Congress gave consumers, us as individuals, not as business owners, the right to um, freeze or unfreeze our personal credit for free. So that was a new law that went into effect last September. And that was a result of the many breaches, which you know culminated in that huge uh, data breach last year. And so, so now more and more people are saying, hey, I'm going to lock down my credit, so can't get to it. So if you're a crook and you're saying, hey, I can either try to steal from this person who has this firewall on their personal credit, or I can go to this business who doesn't have any protection and isn't even checking, so they're not going to find out what's happening for a few months down the line, which is the easier target. So we want to be proactive, yeah. and even if you're thinking, I don't need to build business credit right now, I don't need financing, at least think about monitoring your business credit, because this is part of your business reputation. Hopefully, if your business has a, a Facebook page, you respond to comments. If you have Yelp reviews or TripAdvisor reviews, you respond, and you thank people, or you tell them if it's, you know, if, if they had a problem, you respond to it and offer them something to make them happy. You try to stay on top of your business reputation. Well, that's part of what business credit is about. So that's another reason to check it. And thankfully, it's a lot easier than it was a few years ago. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I got to take a sponsor break. And then I, I have obviously more questions for you. <laughs> so Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Finance Your Own Business by our very own guest, Jerry Detweiler, and Leading Loyalty by Lena Renee, who was also a guest on this podcast. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. As I mentioned, we are speaking with Jerry Detweiler about smart credit strategies. Okay, so... Are we moving toward some sort of regulation of business credit? Is, is it becoming, you know, a thing? Is it on the radar? It is on the radar, yes. California just passed SB 1235, which is the first Truth in Lending Act for small business in the country. They're still in the implementation phase. So the actual implementation of how it's going to look and what it's going to require is still being um, figured out. Uh, NAV was a supporter of it. Our CEO was the only person from the industry who testified in favor of it because we think it's good for small business owners to understand what they're getting into when it comes to financing. And now there are other states that are considering and looking at similar legislation. In addition, um, Marco Rubio and uh, Sherrod Brown, I believe it was, introduced a, a bipartisan bill for uh, data breach notifications for small business owners. There's an effort to cut down a, on a really predatory practice that's been outlawed in the consumer lending world called confession of judgment. It's where when you sign a contract for a small business loan, and they determine that you've defaulted by any measure, they can just seize everything you have and without it going to court first. It's a horrible, horrible um, anti-small business practice. It was uh, exposed in a Bloomberg expose very recently. So there's an effort to cut that back. So I'm encouraged. I mean, I, you know, I would, I would, I would like to see small business owners feel like they have a level playing field. And w there are efforts to, to, to 
provide this without legislation. So for example, NAV is a member of the um, Responsible Small Business Lending Coalition. And that's a group of lenders who have said, hey, we are going to commit to providing upfront information about financing for small business owners. We're not going to wait for legislation. We're going to commit to doing that. And there's a number of lenders who have signed on. So I think we're moving into more direction, more transparency. And then as small business owners start paying attention to their credit and they start yeah. checking it and they start seeing issues or they, you know, they talk to their legislators about the frustrations they have with maybe the financing that they've gotten, whatever, then we will start seeing some more efforts to provide more transparency to small business owners. So this is really great. And I'm going to say this is why organizations like the NSBA, the, the small um, NSBA, the National Small Business Association, uh, organizations like that are so valuable for small business because they lobby on behalf of small business and they interact with the ombudsman and they talk to the Congress people and senators and say, this is, you know, you're killing us here. You know, this is what's happening. Yeah. And right. So yeah. small business and the small business owners are not aware that these organizations exist for them. Well, and if, and if you think about this average small business owners day, you know, they're, they're either putting out fires or trying to generate more business or get the work done. So they don't really, this isn't on the top of their radar. And it's not until something really bad happens that suddenly they say, Hey, well, how could this happen? Um, and like your, and like your reaction, many of them don't even have an idea that this is an issue. So it's not right. on their radar in their day to day business, but then when they run into a problem, it could be quite significant. So hopefully we can get them, you know, paying a little bit of attention to their, to their business credit, seeing what's going on. And then if, if issues arise, you know, speak up and, and, and talk to your advocates or your legislators to let them know, you know, what's going on. Most legislators around the country, whether it's in the state or legislature or Congress, you know, they really do want to support small business. That's our economic engine. For, so they, they really do want to hear from you. Right. And they probably had no idea this stuff was going on either. <laughs> you're right. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. They, they, well, never mind. So um, <laughs> what does it mean? You said something about a, a confession of judgment, but I'm curious about, like, if someone has a judgment on their credit report, what is that? And, and can they get it off of there? Yeah, so that's a court filing that just says um, you were sued and you lost and you owe money to the, you know, the uh, plaintiff. So you owe money to someone. Um, interestingly, on the consumer side, about a year and a half now, they stopped reporting most court judgments because there were um, the state attorneys generals. There's your advocacy group there. They stepped in. They got so many complaints from people about inaccurate information from court judgments on the credit reports that they stopped reporting them on the consumer side. Side. but they are still reported on the business side. So anything like that, anything that comes from a courthouse is called public record information. So that could be a court judgment, a tax lien, state or federal. Um, collection accounts sometimes fall in that category, but they don't usually go through that, the courthouse. They're usually an individually reported item. But there's one more that I want to point out for small business owners. It's really important that is not on most people's radar, and that's called a U. CC filing. So the Uniform Commercial Code, this is federal, you know, code, federal law, um, they can place a filing that basically says to the world, hey, if this business defaults, I have first dibs on the property that's covered by this UCC filing. So if you lease some equipment, the uh, lessor may want to place that uh, UCC filing so that if you default, they can take it back and they know enough where they can, right? Because they have first dibs. But interestingly, a lot of online lenders and some like merchant cash advances, but even some traditional lenders can place a UCC filing on everything, you know, in all receivables. So I was just talking this morning with a small business owner I was interviewing who owns a veterinary practice and she, her first lender, her main lender, um, she can't get secondary financing because the first lender basically has dibs on everything. And Ooh. so she, you know, it's, so it's not an uncommon practice, but it's something business owners want to be on their radar because, and I'll tell you why, because 
what happens is some of these lenders, once you satisfy the debt, they don't notify anybody that it's been satisfied. So it still looks like this UCC filing is open and active and it's been satisfied. So there's another thing that you, know, that, <laughs> that you have to think about dealing with if it's on your credit report, but it could impact your ability to get financing in the future from a variety of different types of lenders. Okay. Wow. I, th this is just it's so unfortunate. I think I'm sort of stuck on the idea that um, it feels like these organizations, these lenders, the, 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 that they just don't care about the health and wellness of their clients. That, you know, that their interest is so much more self-focused that and and short term yeah and yes and some of them are that way i'm not gonna lie but there are others who you know are really and that's where the fintech space has gotten really exciting in the past few years M many banks aren't making what are called small dollar loans which could be as it could be two hundred fifty thousand dollars but a bank's hey yeah. a bank a bank yeah, it costs them about six thousand dollars to underwrite a small business loan that's the average cost of underwriting and so to make a $20,000 loan that, that they can't make money off of that, right? So now we have this fintech space that's, that's coming in and trying to say, hey, let's build a long-term relationship. And certainly that's our perspective at NAV. Our perspective is you come in to NAV, you see your business and personal credit. We, sh you know, we, we make your data transparent. We tell you how to build business credit. This is all for free. And then we're going to show you financing options. And we're also going to show you what you can do to qualify for better financing in the future. So we don't see it as transactional. We see it as a ladder that we're going to help you move up this ladder to get better and better financing as you improve the financial health of your business. And we hope that, you know, we hope that's going to make a meaningful impact for small business owners. We were founded by, you know, two small business owners who went through the misery of getting financing for their <laughs> businesses firsthand and, but also saw the benefit because let's look at the other side of the coin that, you know, accountant, she gets the credit she needs. She buys that jewelry at, you know, I don't know, 50, 75% off, she resells it, she makes a very healthy profit margin, pays it back and does it again. Um, I know bloggers who are making seven figure I income and what they do is they invest in Facebook ads or Instagram ads or whatever it may be and then they send people to their blog, people use the affiliate links, they get, but they don't get paid for that right away. So they don't, they don't make a sale and the money isn't in their bank account that day. They get paid 30 right. or 60 days. So they use a form of financing, often a business credit card, but other forms of financing too, to leverage that so that they can grow their business. So on the positive side, I'm actually super excited about what I'm seeing. I think there's going to be a lot more competition, a lot more transparency, and a lot more empowering the small business owner so that they don't have to just take what they get. They can say, hey, I'm going to position my, my business so I can get better deals and I'm going to shop around and I'm going to know how to shop around so that I can make sure I'm getting, you know, good financing. Yeah, I think that is terrific. And, and I think that that's, you know, part of the value of not only having you educate, you know, within NAV, but coming on podcasts like this and making sure that more and more people understand this is the landscape right now and and it's changing and there are you know firms that are banding together to say you know we're going to practice in good faith and really mean it um, because when you shine a light on something that's when it changes yes yes so i actually was on capitol hill when you know when the, when the effort was going on to give consumers free credit reports and up until then, people just did not know. And, they, and they, if you wanted to see it, to go take off time from work and go down to the local credit bureau to get your credit report. So, um, you know, so that has changed so dramatically. It's rare that I will talk to someone who ha isn't monitoring their personal yeah. credit at least, you know, with one service, if not multiple services. So I'm actually very excited. I think, and the other thing, the other direction I think we're moving, and, and this is certainly part of our focus at NAV is, hey, rather than, than waiting until you're scrambling and you need capital and you're trying to figure out what can you get, 
you should be able to be offered something directly to you before you need it. So it's there and available. And you can say, hey, yes, this opportunity or this crisis has come along. And yeah, I'm going to take advantage of that. And I understand what I'm getting. Um, it's kind of antiquated if you think about it with the technology that we have today that you have to go scrambling around and pulling together different information for different lenders and trying to figure out who you can work with. It should be a lot simpler <laughs> than it is. Yeah. Today. Yeah, it should. Right. So, um, lines of credit as opposed to credit card, um, are, are the, is there an advantage to that or is that, you know, does, is it all following under the same thing? Cause I would, I feel like, a line of credit would be you use it when you need it, which you can do with a credit card as well. But so maybe you need to float payroll for a couple of weeks while you're waiting for receivables or something. Yeah. Is there? Yeah, that's a great know, what, question. With that? Yeah. Yeah, so a line of credit, you know, is basically that's what a credit card is. Credit card just gives you plastic access to that line of credit so you can <laughs> use it when you need it. But it's interesting that I find a lot of business owners don't think of their credit card so much as a financing tool. They think of it more as a payment tool, right? A payment method. Yeah. And that's fine too. That's fine too. If you can get a line of credit at a good interest rate from your bank, credit union, or community bank, go for it. I mean, those traditional lenders are the places where you are going to get the lowest interest rates and the fewest surprises. You know, few gotchas, not a lot of hidden fees or hidden costs, etc. So definitely, if you can't qualify because maybe the bank, you know, it could be it's too small, it could be the bank doesn't lend to your particular industry. A lot of banks choose what type of industry they want to lend into. And so there could be many reasons why that's not possible. Then you might look for a line of credit with an online lender, although those lines of credit and, t and lines of credit in general tend to be shorter term financing. So it's usually one uh, to two years, and then it can is often renewable. So if your financials still look good at the end of that term, you can renew it. Um, your credit card is obviously super speedy. If you already have the credit card, then you have that line of credit available to you. Uh, and it depends on your credit line, whether that gives you enough capability. It also depends on the interest rate. The average interest rate right now on a business credit card is about 17%. And there are some that have lower interest rates or they offer a, a very low rate balance transfer, which you don't necessarily have to use to pay off another credit card. You could just have those funds deposited into your bank account. And then for the next 12 or 18 months, however long it's 0%, you have access to that money and then you have that time period to pay it back. So I do want to encourage business owners who may not be ready for more traditional financing for one reason or another to think about ha having a low interest rate business credit card that could be that fallback, could be that line of credit as long as you use it wisely, right? As long as you're not spending it on, you know, beautiful office furniture, which may not get you any business unless maybe you have a, I don't know, a massage business where people want an <laughs> environment to come into, right? But we don't want to spend on things that aren't going to make money. We want to spend it on things that are going to help your business, you know, be successful and make money. Um, but I do love the idea of having a line of credit available for those times when you have a slow paying client and you need cash flow. That happens all the time. Your client owes you money. They don't pay you on time. You're trying to chase payment for them, but then you have your bills to pay. That's great to have that as a backup. Yeah, right. So, so it, part of what it sounds like to me is don't be reactive. Be really so, – so people listening, it's not – necessarily a good thing to say okay but I don't need it right now so this is good information I'll worry about it when I need it it's more like okay wait make sure you're covered make sure you're prepared so that if something happens you don't have to go into panic mode or really end up having a problem that is hard to solve Yes, exactly. Being proactive gives you more choices and more opportunities. So I often show a chart in my workshops where it's a, the different types of financing. It's on a grid where, you know, time is or cost is on one on the Y axis and efforts on the, you know, X axis. And I point out that the more effort you put in up front, the lower the cost but it's when you wait till the last minute, it's three o'clock in the morning. I would tell you one of the major online lenders says that, I think it's 
20% of their customers come in between 6 p.m. in the evening and 6 a.m. in the morning and apply. Oh, wow. <laughs> so these people are probably kind of panicked, right? And yeah. <laughs> so they're going to pay more in many cases simply because they haven't had the chance to shop around or to position their business to build strong business credit, to make sure their personal credit is as strong as possible, and to make sure that they have, you know, even just the basic of a business bank account that shows revenues, which is so crucial also for many financing sources. Right. Oh, this is so interesting. Okay. I, I, I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate this information. I have learned so much in this conversation. I'm so glad. It, it's really great. And, and, it's, and it's, I, it always makes me feel empowered. Like I could be really scared, but I'm not because I feel like now I know and I know what I can do. And not that I, you know, I am one of those, you know, one woman bands that don't really, it, right, you know, right now I don't need anything, but monitoring my business credit to make sure I'm not the victim of identity theft. I never would have thought of that. Yeah. And you know, this is something you can do in the evening while you're watching TV, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, seriously, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can multitask with this, I promise you. And at least, you know, be in touch with what's going on. Absolutely. Wow. So thank you. Will you share with the listeners um, about NAV and you know, what that's about and um, how they can find you and everything that's going on, please? Sure, sure. So you can find NAV, either we have an app, which is in the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, or you can access it just on your desktop, nav.com. Now, if you go to nav.com slash free account and sign up, then you can upgrade your account for one month for free to get a premium NAV account, which is going to get more detailed and in-depth reports, identity theft insurance, and other benefits. Many of our customers use our free account, and that's truly free, no credit card required. And you'll be able to check your personal credit as well as your credit from business credit from Experian, Equifax, and DNB done in Bradstreet. And if you don't have business credit, we have a tool called Business Launcher in there that's going to walk you through how to build business credit. And then we're going to use that data to show you offers for financing. We're not going to sell your information to lenders. So you're not going to have your phone ringing because you signed up for a NAV account. We're, instead, we're going to tell you, here are the things that you qualify for now. And if you don't qualify for something, here's why, and here's what you can do to build, you know, a, a company that, a financially healthy company that's more attractive to lenders for better financing in the future. One thing I really um, want to emphasize is on the business credit card side, we have something called Match Factor. We use this with all our lending offers, but especially if you're looking for a business credit card, it will give you um, an idea of which ones you are, um, you're meeting their qualifications for. So you don't spend a lot of time with a card that maybe, you know, is not a fit for you and you're just going to get turned down. It's going to be a frustrating experience. So that's all within the NAV account. And our goal is to use your data, your personal business credit and your revenues, help you understand, you know, what's strong, what needs some work, take those steps, but also to show you the financing that's out there. And we, we're not a lender, but we work with over a hundred different financing options around the country, all the way from, you know, credit cards to microloans to SBA loans. So we hope we can help you find what you need when you need it. Boy, no kidding. Thank you. It sounds just terrific. I will be going over and checking it out. Uh, so uh, as I said, thank you so much for spending the time with me and sharing the information with my listeners. You are so welcome. And I will follow up with information for the show notes too. So we have a business, I have a right. checklist of how to build business credit, super simple that they can access. We have those, you know, different articles about which lenders report to which credit bureaus, and we'll just try to make it as, as simple and easy as possible to get started. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. And listeners, i like to thank you, and boy, you should be thanking me for this information that you're getting today, because this is really terrific. I uh, also want to thank our sponsor. If you would like to get a free trial of audible.com as well as a free audio book, just go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day.
I have been fed, that's a fact. I have been fed, that's a fact. My credit card purchases get me cash back. My credit card purchases get me cash back. No one else gets these rewards. Sergeant, that is just plain untrue. What in tarnation? Sir, PenFed's PowerCash Rewards Card isn't just for military members. Anyone can get cash back on all purchases. Ah, friggins! You've ruined my favorite song. PenFed Credit Union. Visit PenFed.org slash PowerCash. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Don't Retire, Graduate, the podcast that asks you what you want to be when you grow up so you can graduate into retirement with a purpose and a passion, whether you're 25, 85, or any age in between. Gain actionable financial and mindset tips from your favorite authors, podcasters, and influencers to help you reach that exciting next chapter. Listen now and start building your path to financial freedom and reframing what retirement can mean to you. This is your host, Eric Brotman, reminding you, don't retire, graduate.